Hello, today we're looking at food tests, food tests, that is testing for certain nutrition types in food. First one we're going to look at is found in potatoes. We're going to look for starch and one example is potatoes. There are others. The second one is the test for lipids. And this can be found, for example, in butter. And again, there are other foods that have this. Remember, lipids are fats and oils. Fats and oils that can be found in food. This is a test for protein. A test for protein. And the example I have there is some milk. Again, there are other foods that contain protein, but milk is quite an easy one to test. And the last one is the test for sugars. So there's just a sugar solution there. For example, some glucose. Let's just tidy that up there, move that out of the way. Right, so we're going to do, uh, we're going to look at how these food types are tested for. We're going to start with starch. Okay, now to test for starch, we use something called iodine solution. Iodine solution. And there you can see some iodine solution in a little dropper. And we can test this on different types of food. The ones I have here, the examples I have here are potatoes and there is some bread. Potatoes and bread. We take a couple of drops of our iodine solution, put it onto the food that we're testing. And if starch is present, you will see the iodine turns to a blue black color a blue-black color. This shows us that we have starch present. A blue-black color means starch is present. So that's the first test that we're learning about today. That was the test for starch. Next we're going to do the test for lipids. One way to do this is to use something called filter paper. Filter paper. You may have seen this at school. It's usually in discs, round shapes like this, about 10, maybe 15 centimeters across. But that's filter paper there. So all we do with our filter paper is we take our sample of lipid, in this case it's the butter, and we can just simply rub it on the filter paper like this. Rub it on the filter paper, and the result then, if we have lipid, is that the filter paper will go what's called translucent. The filter paper will turn translucent. That means that it's partially see-through. So if you hold it up to the light, you can see that it's partially see-through. And that happens because we have a sample of lipid. There is one other way which you may have come across in terms of testing for lipid. So here I've got a container with some oil, perhaps some lipid in there. And over here, I've got another chemical called ethanol. Ethanol. We can put the ethanol in the lipid, give it a shake. Put the ethanol in the lipid, give it a shake, and you will see a cloudy appearance. The solution will go cloudy. And if we have that cloudy appearance, we know that we have lipid in our sample. So a cloudy appearance means lipids are present. So that's our second food test, the test for lipids. Two ways we can do this, one and two. So let's just highlight that as our second test, test for lipids. Next, we can test for protein. So here we have a container where we might think there might be some protein. Is there protein in there? For example, some milk. And we have a special solution called the biret solution. Biret solution. Very important we get the spelling correct on that because it looks like a couple of other potential science words. We put the biret solution in our protein sample or our sample. And if we get a purple or a lilac color, a purple or a lilac color, that means there is protein present. Purple or lilac color means protein is present. 
So that's our test for protein. And remember, the solution is called the Biret solution. Very important to get that name right and to spell it correctly. So the next test we're going to take a look at is the test for sugars. And one example of that might be that of glucose. So here's our solution with potentially or possibly some sugars in there. And we use a slightly different solution. This is called Benedict's solution. Benedict's solution looks very similar, if not the same as Biret. So we have to be very careful we get the name right. And what we do is we place our Benedict solution in our sugar solution and we have to heat it. We have to heat that mixture. We heat that in a water bath, which is basically some water that is being heated with a Bunsen burner. We place our solution mixture in the water bath and we leave it for a few minutes. And if we see a color change to a brick red color, we know that sugars are present. So a brick red color means that sugars are present. Sugars are present. Now it's probably, uh, it's probably worth pointing out here that we see a range of colors. So we start off with blue. It goes to a kind of green color, then yellow, orange, and then eventually brick red. So we often see a range of colors as it changes from blue all the way to brick red. But you can say that a brick red color shows the presence of sugars, shows the presence of sugars using Benedict's solution. Okay, so that's our tests for the solutions or the different food types. Here is a summary of the different ways in which we can test the different food types. So you could take a look at this, make some notes, or if you've printed off the notes that are linked in the description below, you will have a copy of that. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.